What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a Sunday night live. Um, took last week off, was away, but we are back and back to the usual schedule. So real quick, looking at futures, I know it's a few minutes before 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 o'clock here, the light out. Now that the times, you know, clocks are, are changed, it's nice and bright out here. So it's uh, it's weird. It feels weird, but it's I like it. I, I'm, I'm a fan. Um, so we got right now futures are evenish. I mean, techs up slightly, small caps down, VIX up slightly, um, the S and P, the Dow, they're down slightly by these two top uh, indices right here. As of right now, they actually opened down. I think a little bit more at least the S and P, but it's come back a little bit, so it's just about even. To be honest, we'll take a peek at that towards the end of the stream and see how this is looking. But uh, you know, not not too much to be. Uh, to be aware, you know, wary of at least as of right now, or we can't really take too much of that into account, at least for right now. So we'll see. We're going to be diving through a bunch of stocks. I have a massive list, um, which is good and bad because with the massive list, um, it's tough to kind of pick and choose what you want. But I'm making sure to take that very, very seriously going forward until we have confirmation of a more stabilized swing market. And why is that? Why do I not see that happening this week? Um, well, if we take a peek, let's go back to Weeble. We got Bitcoin pulled up. Let's pull up SPY um, on the Weeble chart right here. So we pulled back last week, the past two days. Um, I mean, nothing too significant, to be completely honest. Hit, hit all-time highs on Wednesday after Powell spoke. That's the that's the kind of the danger, I think, is because Powell's speaking, I believe, three times this week. And so we know how the markets are when Powell speaks. So that's the issue, and that's why I don't really see the swing market being super stable this week, I could be wrong, but you know, I think it's still going to be kind of a take it easy kind of week. Um, I did put 20-ish percent of my money back into, the, I think, 20% or so back into the market, but you know, I still have a decent chunk. I mean, I still got a plenty of cash waiting to come back in, so um, at least here. And then the long-term account, that's just stuff that I, I don't. I'm pretty much mostly uh, always in the market at all times. Um, have some cash available, but that's really it. So. Um, let's see. Let's see. Hope everyone had a great weekend. I know I'm pumped to be back. It's 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 fun. I mean, it was a good break, but it's it's fun to be back. So um, no no distractions at least the next couple of months. So um, it should be fun. Um, earnings for KRMD next two weeks. Moving up. Let me know. Yeah, let's take a peek. Um, overall, you know the market. I mean, we, we we what we've been seeing right is we've been seeing pullbacks and bounces. This one actually looks pretty solid in terms of KRMD. We can actually probably draw on a nice trend line or downtrend line here too. Um, or rough, you know, draw something in roughly, you know, we can roughly kind of, eh, we got something like this and it's not perfect. We can kind of connect a couple tops there. Yeah, it's not perfect right there. But yeah, I mean, I would say the 50 SMA, this blue line right here is going to be your first resistance to watch. So up around this 425, 435 area, it's going to be key. Getting over four bucks is pretty nice. Um, I do like this setup. Uh, chart wise, because you know, you're, you're you had a stock that's run up quite a bit, right? Hit up over 12 and it's pulled back, and now it's putting in some lows, and it looks like it wants to potentially reverse off these lows. So, you just don't want to see it make a new low. What's the, what would a new low be? It would be below the 327. So, 325 would probably be the stop in, in terms of how I would play it, right? Um, if I have conviction on the trade, or if I know more about the due diligence behind it, I'm buying down towards 325. Under 325, I give it a day or two, cut it if it can't hold it. So, um, that's that. Uh, we're going to dive through, I mean, if we, if we go back really quick to spy, the thought process here is that, yeah, we've had some, we had some more chop in past weeks, uh, and some significant pullback days and then, you know, rebounds. So we kind of had an indecision day on Friday. This candle is rep, kind of represents some indecision. Why is that? Well, because we, we opened and closed right, right in the middle of the range of the day. We had range all the way down about 387 and range up to about 391.50. And we end up closing right in the middle of that. So that's why it's kind of like, okay, you know, where, you know, who's winning here, buyers or sellers? We don't really have any kind of direction. That's why I also like to use the candlesticks, the hollow candles, which if you guys haven't seen it, if you want to go check it out, the hollow candle video on the channel I made about a week ago. That's a really good video because they do tell you a better story than just your your solid body candles. Um, that's why I like to use them. So um, not much really we can take to just indecision right there. So it, it's a kind of a fight, kind of a war, at least right, as of right now in terms of the buyers and the sellers. So um, at least I told you guys last week and Friday and even on the Saturday video, yesterday's video, um, 
you know, my thought process was into some of these online betting stocks, some of the sports betting stocks. Um, so at least I have some money in there, and we'll see if, if, it, if it pans out. If it doesn't pan out, I'm, I'm going to give it some time on that. Let the tournament kind of go through, because as of right now, we got plenty of games. I mean, I was just pretty much watching games this afternoon, so it's been fun. My pick was Illinois to win the whole thing, and they already lost, so bracket's done. But, you know, that's how it goes. Um, alt seems like they can go alt. Oh, let's take a big alt, ELT. Uh, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button because the more thumbs up we get, the more people that we see, the more ideas we can get flowing in the chat, which is always good for everyone. And if I can't see something, if I miss, I'm, I'm not going to be able to see everybody, everything in the chat, then it's great for everyone else to say, okay, this looks pretty cool. Let me take a peek and write it down. You can go refer back to that stock or that idea later on. And then, you know, maybe that ends up working out great for you. So that's the name of the game. So make sure you hit the thumbs up button in the chat. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Alt actually looks like it wants to kind of reverse. It's got some kind of, uh, looks like we had some, you know, this was our consolidation area right down here, and we're trying to break out to the upside of that consolidation. So I would like to see it holding above 15. Why 15? Kind of a psychological whole number. Um, also, we have some of these wicks up in the past couple of months that broke above 15, but then came right back under 15 like every single time. So 15 is key, and it's trying to hold up around that 50 SMA this blue line right here. So would like to see it honestly holding like 1550 ish would be ideal uh, for ALT. But it looks like honestly, it's putting in higher lows. Look at these, look at these lows. These relative lows here are all kind of inching their way up. So now you'd want to see this thing getting back up over 20 bucks and then, you know, eclipsing these prior highs that we had from a few weeks back up over 25. Seems like 25 is going to be the next resistance point to watch for alt uh, to the upside. So um, that's what I would be thinking. Uh, SNDL. Um, I think this is a, honestly, I don't have any SNDL right now, but I don't think it's a terrible idea. Um, here we go. Would like to see SNDL bounce off the 50 SMA. Um, would like to see it holding the 135 area. Um, it's It's been showing decent strength, to be completely honest, putting in, again, kind of higher lows the past couple of weeks, the past couple of days. So would like to see it holding up around that 150, 135 would be kind of my like, okay, that's probably an area that we'd like to see hold. Um, doesn't mean that it has to. No, it's really going to kind of really depend on how cannabis does. And so it depends on, I think we're going to get more legislation, more bills, stuff like that going forward, but it depends on that stuff. And so the leader of the pack in the cannabis space is, is Tilray, or at least it has been, you know, um, especially for these Canadian companies too. And Tilray, you know, we can get rid of this guy just to clean things up a little bit. Some of these lines. Tilray's at the 50 SMA. So 25 bucks, I would like to see hold on Tilray um, for a bounce. And we'll see what happens. Uh, if we get some more news in the space, that's obviously going to be huge for not only Tilray, but probably for all the cannabis stocks um, as a whole. So I would I'd be watching Tilray for sure. Tilray got close. It got, you know, up to that 31, 32, and then it pulled back. So I would like to see it holding above over 30 or so. That's kind of the key, at least in my eyes, for Tilray. Tilray holds up over 30 bucks. That's a good sign, and it gets itself pushing back on up over 32, over 35. Really, for Tilray, over 36 were some of these highs back in here, uh, back at the beginning or mid uh, February. 36 is key. Over 36, and Tilray is probably heading and it's going to try to make a big move, at least chart wise. We'll see, obviously, if people, you know, if, if everyone gets behind it, if enough volume comes in. Which generally, that's the other thing too. We haven't been seeing as much volume the past couple of weeks in a lot of stocks that made these massive runs. The volume hasn't been there. So I was kind of curious to see how the stimulus checks would do um, and how that would impact things, if it really would. And I mean, we still got some time because if you think about the timeline of people getting the checks, deposit that money into a brokerage account, and then actually use that money, it takes some time. So really the next week or two, we'll see if we see elevated volume across some tickers or the overall market. If not, then, you know, you know, it's kind of getting back to kind of normal, right, in a sense, or back to reality in, in a sense, right? Um, HOFV is a stock that I was, I talked about months ago as when this thing was down around like one, two bucks down in here, I was like, this is going to be a potential, you know, 10x stock. I think I have a video saying like the next 10x stock or something back like a long time ago. Um, you know, and it was really just at the time, like the stock just kind of bled out from when I made that video. It was nothing like, okay, like it wasn't like, okay, this is going to happen right now. I was saying, hey, this is kind of a recovery play, number one. And then they also potentially have the sports betting aspect as well. Um, you know, so you kind of throw that together. Then they come out PR about they are looking into the NFTs, right? Or whatever they're doing with NFTs. 
I mean, that's that's big, right? So people are the, the, the speculation there, plus all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes, um, and it being a recovery play. I mean, this is a kind of a perfect setup for this thing. But the volume was insane. This is probably going to gap up hard. And when I say gap up, what that means is going to be the pre-market hours. If you're watching like HOFE, let's take a look at the, what happened at the end of the day on Friday. Yeah, so I mean, it hit up to 472, then pulled back up to about 417. I think this is still a stock that's going to probably open up come 4 a.m. You know, Eastern Time, Webull, whatever broker you have. If you have access to 4 a.m. trading, uh, you're probably going to see this thing popping up over five. I would think five bucks would be a key resistance, but I think I, we can see this thing over five if the momentum stays with HOFV. We have a spike up here towards 650 or so, so six uh, 645. So up around 625, we have some spikes back in here. 625 or 645 will be key. So let me just draw these lines in really quick in case I you know, happen to be looking to trade this thing in the morning hours tomorrow. Um, just as areas to watch, that'll be very strong resistance. I'm gonna draw some more into this high right here at like 711 it looks like. So if HOFV gets up to those levels, I'm not really looking to buy that thing up there, right? If I, I'm, I'm looking to sell into those levels or hold a small amount of shares from a lower average. And if it breaks out over those levels, well, then we got a pretty big breakout potentially coming and this stock may be making a run up towards 10 bucks or so. So that's what I'd be watching um, for HOFV. Had, the, the volume is not gonna, the volume doesn't lie here. I mean, look at this volume, insane volume and closing towards the high of the day. That's pretty. That's usually a good sign or pretty telling of, of where this thing may be moving in the next couple of days. Um, I think it's funny though. If you look on like TD Ameritrade or some brokers, it was like the news on this stock was like Twitter account with two hundred thousand subscribe or two hundred thousand followers tweets about the connection to you know NFTs or something like that. It's just funny. Uh, and then the company came out and addressed it. So they didn't say like what many companies do when when stocks run as like a sympathy play for a sector or for like anticipation of news or anticipation of something like that, what many stocks or many companies will do is they'll come out and say, yeah, we have no idea why the stock's running up. Like, don't come out and say that. Say, yeah, you know, we're aware of, 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 what, of what's happening and we're looking into um, this sector. Like I, what they did was actually kind of smart, right? Instead of just saying, we have no idea why the stock's running up and then the stock just tanks, it's like, okay. <laughs> That happens a lot. So we gotta be careful at sometimes with some of these stocks that there's no news that the stock is actually running on. It's speculation. Always be careful of stuff like that. All right, let me scroll scrolling on through if I missed some stuff. Um, I like DKNG. It's gotta get back up over it's gotta get over 75 for the next breakout. Uh, I like DKNG. Um, honestly, I'm kind of pissed because I was gonna throw it in the long-term account down around like 50 bucks. Um, and I just never did. Uh, at the time, I think I, I yeah I was looking at it back in here around 52 or so when it was breaking out of this kind of downtrend or whatever I was gonna you know I was looking at, and I never did, but um, you know I'm kind of kicking myself for that one. I, I liked it. I mean I I used to use DraftKings and I lost you know plenty of money on that you know back in the day, but you know it is what it is. Uh, I still think it's cool. I'm I'm in Texas right now, so I can't. Their sports betting is not legal, so I mean you have to go through I guess some offshore stuff and do some sketchy stuff, which I did back in college, but I, I'm not really interested in doing that now and just losing money. <laughs> so um, um, SCR also on my list. I, I have it on the list in terms of some of those um, sports betting plays, right? Um, good as a sports betting app. Yeah, so this is this is not a bad one as well. Um, I think I, ha yeah, I had it on the list. I don't know if I mentioned it in the video, but it's at least it came up on my scan or something that I was looking at. Um, I didn't like it as much just because the risk reward here, I don't know. I don't know enough about it personally to say, okay, like I really like this stock. But um, if I take a peek, kind of have, yeah, here's your downtrend. So you got to get this thing back up over, looks like over 30 bucks is going to be key for SCR, score media and gaming. That'll be key. Over 30 bucks is nice. And it, it looks like it wants to. It kind of has this setup where it's like, okay, you know, we have higher lows being put in roughly here. Um, if we can, you know, adjust this line, not perfect, but you know, roughly higher lows, if it can hold up over 25 and get back up over, over uh, 30, that could be key. I'm curious to see, I mean, maybe I'm just going to be dead wrong and, and none of this stuff gets factored in, or maybe it was factored in, you know, months and weeks ago in terms of the online betting stocks. But I'm curious to see if, if any of them get a little push this week or next week, you know, with the, the whole tournament going on. I don't know. Um, it's going to be cool. I think it'd be fun to see. Um, HEPA, I still think is fine. I'm kind of, I was in HEPA and then I had to, I, I was away. So I, I went all cash because I didn't want to deal with anything and also transitioned my account. So I was in it 
and I ended up selling it in like 220-ish, and then it went up to like 240, which kind of stunk because the market got, I think, weak or something, so it pulled back, but it's holding up over two, which is looking pretty good in my eyes here. You know, we had this dip down. I made a video over, you know, risk management strategy, and the dip that we saw um, on HEPA was also with a lot of stocks. So the reason why I didn't sell, I was like, okay, two bucks is my stop loss. The reason why I didn't sell down here is because we saw a really rocky overall market. And I was like, I'm not going to sell into the weakness of the market. I, there were still, you know, reasons to believe I had my thesis in place. You know, everything was okay. Realistically, didn't want to see it going below, over one, going below 150. And it never, it had weakness down there. But look at these, these wicks. These wicks are actually good. Like in, in my eyes, it was actually a good sign. Because, yeah, we had days where the stock fell to 164, but then where did it actually close? It never actually stayed down there. It, it, the buyers brought it right back up to 185. So that's significant, you know, buying pressure that is pulling the stock right back up. So when I saw these wicks, that was actually kind of like a an exception to the rule. And so when I have a, a, a mental stop, for example, of this play was like two bucks back in uh, back at the time. I, I'm I, I, nine times out of ten, I'll respect that mental stop. But again there's kind of an aspect of like you could play it super technical and and that's i would recommend for most people but as you kind of see stuff more and more right you understand that hey this is actually probably a decent buying opportunity uh, i wish i had you know had more confidence in that at the time but then i was able to end up coming out greed on the trade so it was like you know okay it, there was no reason for me to take a, a pretty fat loss when i ended up if i was just patient on the trade and it ended up being, you know, coming out green. I still like it though. This gap up towards about 270. I still want to see that get filled. It came up to like 250. So 250 is key. That's resistance right now on uh, HEPA. So I think under like 225 is not a terrible spot. Then 250 is a decent price target for the, at least first leg. And then 270 up here, 275 ish would be the next price target I would have um, for HEPA. We'll see though. I would be careful here on a lot of swings. If you're, if we have a green day or whatnot, I'm not saying sell or whatever, but I'm saying be careful, have some cash ready because we have some volatility, I think coming this week with Powell speaking three times. So that's going to potentially create some, some rockiness in the market. And I think it will hopefully after this week and, and, and we'll kind of stabilize, you know, and, and maybe the, be a better swing trade market, but it just hasn't been. So it's been better for scalps and, and taking it light. No reason to lose all the money that you know you made or to lose money right now. Um, when there there will be times when it's like, okay, let's go. We got to attack. And there will always be those offensive times, right? Um, NBY and BBI. NBY has been solid too. It's This is a, uh, let's see. Yeah, I've. This is a stock I've traded a lot. I, I used to trade in the past. I mean, look at these spikes. This is, a, is one of those spiky stocks. I mean, it popped a little bit on uh, on Friday. It had a decent volume surge. I'd be careful here. I would like to see it holding $1 now. Don't really want to see it dropping below $1, ideally. So um, we'll see. This actually sparks, not that this is a Chinese company, right? But this sparked uh, a quick thought into some Chinese education stocks. Because I was seeing some stuff. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, here we go. Um, no, China low flow. We want we want online EDU. A I have a bunch of Chinese online education stocks. Why is that kind of? Because they were also they got some attention last week. Um, AMBO is my go-to for the online education. I'm not. I don't really have a thesis behind this trade, but I was. I was just noticing um, that CLEU. Not close. CLEU. Um, was one that got some attention. Now, did it get some crazy volume? No, but it spiked up and hit up towards this 485 kind of randomly. So, okay, that's an interesting play to, to note, just something to note that there was some volume there. Uh, and then let's see, Wafu was W A F U, was that one that uh, popped up as well? It may have gotten some volume. Yeah, it did. It got, yeah, look at this little volume bar, a little, little kind of sneaky volume on, on Wafu. So, my play on these is I like AMBO as the tr uh, online education play. I don't know why sometimes, you know, I, I don't have a, uh, I haven't looked deep enough into this, but I just noticed, hey, these are, these are stocks that seem to be getting loaded as they say. And why is that? Well, we got some extra, we got some volume and the stocks didn't close up towards the high of the day. CLEU, for example, popped up and then came right back. It's a super low float. So it's very thin. Be careful on that one. But I like AMBO. Um, if, if these Chinese online education stocks, um, keep popping up. Keep this one on the radar. This is why I always like having lists, always like this stuff, because you can always come back to these stocks. 
um, many, many times. So AMBO, I would say down around 250 is not a terrible spot. You have trend line support down here towards like 225. So you have about like a 25, 35 cent risk. The downside, first target would be up towards three bucks. And then this thing, when it gets attention, this thing has had that history of going up five plus multiple times. So, you know, I would be careful on that one. I would be ready for something like that. Um, SOS, let's see. I, I don't know. SOS is weird. I, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want... People on the second channel, I had videos on SOS, and it basically was also the second channel. I think I'm going to change the the uh, the types of videos. I'll explain that in a second, but um, which I think is linked in the description box of my videos, so you can check it out. Stock trends um, is the second channel, but what I do there is is if something happens, right? and I want to make a quick video on a specific stock or, or there's news or whatever, I will generally put something like that out on that channel rather than make it on the main, on the personal channel. Just kind of the way I want to separate things in a sense. But SOS has been uptrending. We can get rid of some of these lines. Um, let me get rid of that line. Has been uptrending, putting in higher lows. So you do like to see that. That's a good sign, right? My issue with SOS is that, to be honest with you guys, I wasn't super happy or was I wasn't super satisfied with the response they had to the Hindenburg report to be completely honest with you I'm not saying that they're a scam or they're a fake company no they they seem like they have there is legitimacy there but I wasn't a huge fan with the way that they responded to it um it didn't seem like it was very comprehensive in my eyes so they have some videos but you know okay cool I saw some videos we got resistance up around like this eight or nine bucks so nine bucks is key it's going to be Bitcoin uh, on SOS. If Bitcoin pushes up, SOS is going to push up as well. Or if they come out with a press release from the company, then there you go. Um, reason is Bitcoin as of late, right, has been kind of grinding its way back on up. SOS is a low float stock as well. So you'd like to see Bitcoin getting some solid. It's, it's putting in higher lows. And I'd like to see Bitcoin, you know, holding up, getting back over 60K, which I think longevity wise, I think Bitcoin's probably going to go to 100K at some point, you know, this year, potentially. Um, you know, which I have a little bit of Bitcoin, nothing crazy. I have about maybe 5% of my um, longer term account in Bitcoin. No intention to sell that, you know. And so I think it's, it's, I think it's okay. It's putting in higher lows. So just watch Bitcoin. It's one of those stocks, you know, unless they get a press release, watch Bitcoin, unless there's some more dirt that Hindenburg or somebody else has on them, you know, it's probably going to just do its thing and, and until, you know, until something happens with with Bitcoin that's really kind of riding on it, right? Also, April is key. They're getting their next shipment, I believe, of um, miners in April. So then they'll be like fully stocked, I guess, or yeah, full capabilities of their miners. So that's key too. So watch watch out for, um, I believe, April 15th or mid-April or so, I think is the key. Uh, okay, let me see if... it the, the momentum does look good. It's got to get back over nine though, I'd say. Um, okay, sorry if I'm missing stuff. I'm going to scroll through quickly and answer some stuff really quick. Um, Neo, didn't, I didn't mention Neo. I, I, I still think it's okay. I mean, uh, I've been seeing some stuff that people don't like Neo and people are like, yeah, it's a scam. We'll see how, we'll see how that plays out. I, I think it's, I, I, they're not like, okay, they're not like the, they're not going to be Tesla, right? And I think it's going to be, there, there's so much hype now around Tesla too with the new price target out of $3,000, the bull case of $4,000 by 2025 from ARK Invest, um, which is cool and all. And there's a lot of, you know, reasoning to believe that that Tesla is going to be one of those. It's Tesla, to my, in my eyes, is like Apple early on, the way that I see it right now. As long as things stay the course and as long as nothing crazy happens, I kind of see it as like, as, as like you're still getting, you're getting a, a, a shot at, at, at you're, you're, you're getting your chance at, at buying Apple like five years ago, maybe. I don't know. Um, to a degree, right? That's kind of maybe even five, seven years ago. I don't know. I forget how how long ago Apple made. It's like I know my I know my parents at least. My dad has had Apple shares for great. Like, I can't even tell you how large uh, of a percent gain he has on that. Just hasn't sold it, right? But I think Tesla's one of those stocks. Um, I don't think Neo is going to be necessarily to that degree. It's already had its parabolic run, but I think there's also going to be some more backing here there's there's more than just the ev aspect here on neo and i believe as of right now neo is going to be china's kind of golden child i guess in the space i i that's just my take from what i've seen um and and i don't think china wants to let tesla just take over i think china's going to want to have their you know chinese based company right uh, at least compete or at least in the eyes of the public right compete so I think Neo's gonna be fine. I still want to see Neo. I, this is it's a long-term play. I have no, I, 
no intention to sell my Neo. Uh, I just, I'm just like anything else, right? Not going to go over like 10% of my, you know, account in my long-term account with Neo, right? There's no need to go over 10%, I would say, um, on something like that. Now, Tesla, people are like, yeah, I got, you know, 50%, 100%. It's up to your risk tolerance. My risk tolerance, I'm, I'm not going to do that. And I don't get emotional. So like if all of a sudden something happens with Neo and there's some dirt, or even if, if Tesla had some horrible stuff happen and I'm like, hey, fundamentals here have changed. I want to be at a point where like, I don't have so much money tied up where it's going to hurt me to sell at a loss or when it's down, right? Like, okay, let's move on. There's always another opportunity. Um, that's how I see it. Even my long-term plays, I literally do not have any attachment to them. I see, I see value here, so I'm going to play it. But if at some point that changes, you know, I'll be ready to take my money out. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know about the rate increase. Steve been super, super set on not doing that, but Hey, who knows? I, you know, it's, it can happen. Um, I think, I think, yeah, I think he's, I think he's going to be careful. Powell's going to be careful at least for right now. Uh, NNDM short term buy quick sell play. Let's take a peek. Uh, NNDM actually is on my list. I did, I took a day trade on this one, um, back after the big dips back here. But NNDM would like to see it now holding up over about like 950 or so, really 10 bucks. If I can hold 10 bucks, that's awesome. Um, there's, I, people will see longevity here too. I, I'm going to take this one for, you know, more of a, a swing trade idea. Just kind of my take on it. Um, I, it 10 bucks holds, this thing has, has room up to where I would like to see it hitting up towards 13 first and then making a run back up to where it was. I'm curious to see, let's actually take a peek. Um, at ARK Invest, this is, uh, let me see if I can go back. This is Lucid Tracking that I'm looking at for those interested. So NNDM, let's take a peek. Their weight, so for example, right, in ARK in, in ARK's ETFs, um, Tesla has a weight of like 10%. So NNDM's weighted here in ARK Q of 2.2, just over 2%. We can see here uh, 0.8% and then 1.4. But what we can see, if we can look back the past couple of days, um, we can see that, that the weight in NNDM has actually increased. So relative to right to the, to the, the, the positions in these ETFs, um, NNDM, so that, that tells me that they have, they still have conviction here on NNDM, which is a good way to kind of a good backing, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm only going to do what ARK Invest does. No, but it, it helps kind of solidify your, your thesis if, if you kind of want that, um, you know, extra piece to the puzzle, I guess. Um, they've been buying a little bit of NNDM actually as of late, roughly. So uh, I like this one. They, they like it as a long-term play, though. They're they're in this one for the longer term, at least as of right now. So I think you can play it two different ways. Uh, you can what I will, what I personally will do on NNDM is because it's run up so much. I just don't have intentions of uh, of of you know buying something that's up so much over the past like six months, right? So. Uh, and, and holding it long term, I'll be the one to play this thing on a short term scale. So if I notice that there's, you know, NNDM takes a pretty big dip, or if I see opportunity here, I'll buy a, a pretty heavy position and day trade it, and then you know, ride up the rest as I see as I, momentum stays. I'll scale out of my trade. So I think NNDM over ten is, is still okay. Um, welcome to the best content on YouTube. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. So, oh yeah. What I was saying too about the second channel too, I was going to do. Um, so I've been doing just kind of individual stock is, and I don't think I'm going to stop that when stuff happens for individual stocks. And also on that channel too, just because I make a video on a stock, I like nine, eight times out of 10, I don't actually have any shares or i literally haven't traded that stock anytime, any, any recent you know time in the recent past, um, or even intend to trade it again. But people have questions or it's a hot stock or, it's a trending stock, right? Hence the name, stock trends, right? That's the whole idea of it because I saw that as a important thing because there's a lot of videos, right, of people who are who are just stock pickers or whatever you want to call them. But there's no, like, I think that my, at least my take on stuff is I'm more of a technical-based, you know, entry, exit kind of person, right? So I'm looking for ideal risk-reward rather than just, oh, yeah, this is a stock in a hot sector here, buy it, you know? So I want people to understand that. So hopefully... What I'm going to be doing going forward is maybe instead of doing like one specific stock is like whatever's hot or wherever I see potential value or a hot sector, I'll make a video going over a bunch of stocks and we'll do technical analysis fairly quick. So it's not going to be boring on one stock or I'm not going to bore you, but we'll go over a couple, whatever you like, what you know makes sense, add it to your list. And maybe it's an idea that you have going forward. So maybe I'll be doing more of that kind of consistently all the time on that channel. That's kind of the thought process. So we'll see. Um, let's see. 
Um, uh, HVBTF. I don't know. I don't know enough about this one. Um, this is the setup looks decent. If it can hold up over like three fifty ish or three twenty five, the setup looks decent on HVBTF. Fifty SMA here at like three fifteen. Doesn't look bad. Um, what we've been kind of seeing on this guy too is we had these kind of pushes up consolidations and then the next leg. So here's your past consolidation, right? And what we're seeing right now, kind of, right, is you're setting up this consolidation right here. So you'd like to see it kind of holding support, which it seems to be doing in the low threes, mid to low threes, holding support, bounce back up, you know, popping this thing back up over five, makes the next leg to the upside. Um, on track and plug. I don't know. No, I don't know much about um, on track though. That's a weird dip. That's a yeah. Well, it wasn't actually as big. It was down from twenty four to twenty one. Eh. Fifty SMA is uh, resistance right now, so it's got to get back. This has got to get back over like twenty four fifty. Fill this gap. Get back up towards twenty five. But see, I don't know enough about it though. Um, plug is a hot one for sure. Is it on my list? No, I have BLNK on my list. Plug's not bad. Plug is, is kind of showing some support down here around this 35. Would like to see 35 or so hold. Plug's got some range, I think, if it can get going to the upside. Um, let's see, we can draw. Eh, nothing. Eh, not perfect. I'm going to get rid of that. It wasn't like a, I couldn't really connect too many lines, so I figured, eh. I think I took it for a day trade and I got burned on it um, two weeks ago, maybe, back in here. Yeah, I think I got burned when it dipped down to like 33, 50 or so. Yeah, I got burned. Um, it was weird because I think the market was actually up that day too, but burn myself. Um, I yeah, I don't know. This is this is this is a stock that has a range too. If we do, if we do some some look right here, we take a look from about th from where it's at up towards the, this fifty SMA, fifty five bucks is forty five percent. That's that's a lot of. I mean, that's a, that's some big range. I mean, if you made forty five percent on a trade like that, that's solid on on a stock like Plug, a stock that's up over you know a stock over ten bucks, you're making forty five percent in a fairly short period of time, which it has that potential to do. That's not bad. Um, I would say I would like to see it holding 30 bucks as my low. So I would like to see it not going below this area right here or it kind of found some support. So 30 bucks is the, the low right there, at least for me. Um, TRCH. Let's see. This is not looking bad either. They, uh, I, I believe they announced like a special dividend. So I'm not sure the details of how this stuff worked out, but TRCH is at the 50 SMA. So we'd like to see two bucks hold, but if we can, we can take a peek too at, um, let's take a, let's take a look at torch. Um, I believe we can see update on a business combination timing, hold a special meeting within the next 30 to 60 days, closing the airment to second quarter of 2021. Okay. Okay. So yeah, they have the whole merger, right, with Meta. Yeah, Meta Material. Okay. So that was the thing. People were asking, like, why would, you know, oil and gas play, you know, Torch. It, they're, they're, the play is the merger here. I, I don't know. I would like to see it holding two bucks. It's been kind of crazy, though, because it had this, this kind of hype period back when it got up over four, and then it came back down, but it's held two pretty well. So I would, I mean, if you're looking for a bounce spot, 50 SMA bounce on the daily chart is beautiful, Two bucks, also support right below it. I think that's that's your spot. Um, so you're risking twenty cents to the downside for here, which is not. I mean, I'm, I might even take a peek at. I'm putting it on my list because um, I know I've been following it, <clears throat> or I've been noticing people have been commenting or asking questions on it. Um, so it's worth at least taking a, a closer look. I believe. Oh yeah, it was in here <clears throat> after it had its first little push up towards like three sixteen. It was right here. I had a prior line drawn in as prior um, resistance became support. I was looking at this for a trade and I just didn't take it. And then within minutes of it happening, the stock popped up to like 40% or something like that. So <clears throat> that was what pissed me off at Tor with uh, Torchlight a couple weeks ago. Okay. Um, <clears throat> scrolling on through. Uh, BLNK is one too because I have it on my list. Yeah, I would like to see it holding up. It's This is not a bad spot. So why did it hold up? It's interesting. Why did it hold up on Friday at 35-ish? Well, look back here. This is a prior area of resistance, now becomes new support. So that's a decent spot <clears throat> to watch. 35 bucks is key. 
And then after that, 30 bucks is just kind of a psychological whole number. Yeah, you had some more weakness. And obviously when the market's selling off, you know, you're going to see some further weakness. And that's another thing too. People, I've been hearing some more talk about high beta names. What is a high beta name? Um, essentially, all it really means, all you have to understand is that when you're trading these more volatile growth stocks, these kind of future, um, more tech um high growth potential stocks that if you look at some of the moves that have been made on these stocks, you know, you're talking hundreds of percents in the past year. So when the market pulls back 1%, you got to be ready for your stock to pull back 5, 10% on a given day. Maybe even, you know, okay, at the end of the day, it closes up or closes down three to 5%. So you'd be ready for that. You know, if you're not, if you're not ready for that, or if you can't hold through that, then you shouldn't be playing these types of stocks. So, and especially in the, the rocky market we've been in, that's that's part of the game, especially right now when you kind of have the whole, you know, when things are rocky and it's and the Fed's talking every other day and it's like, okay, up and down and up and down. That was good. That was bad. That was, I don't like this. I think we're kind of getting to the point though with Powell right now that it's like, we know what he's going to say unless something drastically different is said. I don't think the market's going to care. I think, you know, we, we saw some spike last week um, to the upside, which was surprising because it hit you know, in the past, every time he spoke, it was like, okay, the market's going down. Oh man, what are you, what are you saying? Help us out here, Powell. But he, you know, it seemed like he wasn't. Um, but I think, you know, we're going to kind of see a lessened impact of ever speaking because it's like, okay, every day, like, okay, we got it. We get the point. Um, yeah, hit that. If you guys hit that thumbs up button, all it really does, it's not even like, okay, I, it's not even necessarily for me. It's really for, for everyone because then more ideas in the chat and I'm, I can't catch everything. So if I miss something, right? You can take note of, okay, someone mentioned this stock. I'm going to take a look at it tomorrow or tonight, and it may be the, the, the money maker for you this week. So that's the name of the game. More likes, more people in the chat, more awesome ideas flowing. That's the, that's the point. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. BBI. This is not looking terrible. Um, let's see. Boulder, Colorado, we got as their uh, headquarters. I have well, let's take a peek. I have not, there's some solid support down around the low one. So $1 support seems to be a solid area for right now, which is not bad. We have had some consolidation. So here's your kind of consolidation. It's been like, okay, we're in this range for up towards 140, down towards one, and it's in that kind of range. So over 140 is the kind of the kick to the upside. So that's the key. If it gets over 140 and opens, now these wicks, right, where this, it just shows where the stock was that day. It never, it didn't, close at that level or open that level that just shows you the range of the day you know that's cool but you would like to see a, a close and an open the next day over 140 or over 135 or so on bbi so it's getting close it's, it's up there it's, it's it's within range right of making that move so i i kind of like that um yeah that's not that's, that's definitely not a bad idea another one to watch too that i've been noticing or at least been this on my radar is ayro um, I like this one too, um, as an EV play. If I, if, if EV, well, here's one definitely to watch this week, watching Tesla to see if the EV kind of fire gets ignited again, because if, if we see, right, Tesla just blows up and goes to like 750, I don't even know where it's at 800 again. Um, then, you know, because of the ARK invest price target, which it make Tesla may come right back down in, you know, in, in future days. I'm not going to short it. I have it long term. I'm not going to mess around with shorting Tesla because we've seen what's happened over the past couple of months and you know years, right? Um, but that could ignite the fire. So Tesla starts running. Neo, you want to watch even like Fisker. You want to even watch AYRO. You want to watch Solo. All these EV names that we were talking about, you know, months ago when the EV stocks were going nuts. That's going to be, you know. That's where you want to watch. And so AYRO is a stock that's been getting held down by the 50 SMA, which is sitting at like 725. So I kind of like it under seven bucks. If you can get AYRO under seven bucks, I think that's a decent idea. Now, when things got kind of rocky in the market, this thing came down to 450. So you got to be careful. I mean, not careful, but you got to be able to stomach something like that, you know. But I think this is going to be a solid. I think this is actually a decent play. I mean, I traded it back in here on the 50 SMA bounce up towards like 11 bucks and I took my profits and then, you know, I didn't end up reloading, but I'm looking to kind of get back into it. And so if we, if, if EVs get hot or if I see the slightest, slightest sign of EVs heating up, this is my first go-to um, in terms of the space. I already have exposure to Fisker. Um, you know, I have such a low average in that one. So I'm just selling covered calls and that guy, um, you know, do I want to sell that one? Honestly, 
if my cover calls get hit, I'll just sell it and, and just kind of show on that one. Um, I had a chance to sell it over 30. I think I sold a $32 cover call on FSR. Uh, yeah, and it just didn't, it, it got so close to 32, it didn't, it didn't hit it. So uh, I made some nice money on the premium, but I just didn't actually end up taking the, didn't actually take my share, so, which, is, which is fine. I mean, I'm, I'm fine just keep keep doing it. So all my covered calls that I sold, right, um, for a lot of my longer term stocks, which what I do literally, it's it's like free money, in a, especially to kind of also in a choppy market. That's that's the money. Like that's that's so nice to have. Um, and I have some videos on selling covered calls on the channel too. But if you can just sell covered calls on your long term stocks, now you got to have about hundred. You got to have hundred plus shares of a stock. So if you're selling covered calls, you can make a few bucks on the premium. And if the stock goes down, nothing happens. You keep your shares. You made your few bucks on the premium. The, the option expires and nothing happens, you know, but if it goes up and you actually get taken out at that price, okay, cool. But you, you set the price, I guess you set your price target. So it's not a terrible way to, to even swing trade too, to be honest with you. Uh, if you're looking at swing trade stocks and you have a certain price target and you're buying hundred shares anyway, why don't you just set your price target to be, you know, that covered call. And if it takes you out, it takes you out, but at least you made money you're, you're essentially getting paid to sell at that price in, in a sense, which is kind of cool. Um, Clover Health, uh, a pain in the butt here, but we may have finally bottomed. <laughs> can can we believe that? I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I'm, I'm still holding my shares. I'm going to sell more covered calls in this one too. Um, I think that's what I did in those expired on, on Friday. So I'm going to sell more covered calls on this guy uh, and, and play this one, you know, longer term. So I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I think I only have like, in the long term, I don't think I have very much. I think I may have like five percent of the account in, in, in Clove, so it's not like it's like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm Clove's killing me. But you sell some covered calls, you lower your cost basis, and you know you make a few bucks in the process. I think it's that's that's fair. Oh, PLTR, I have in the IRA. I also have in the long term account. I mean, let it sit right here because the more money that I have coming in that I every month I deposit, the more money that that happens, and that I you know that's how I recommend everyone to go about it. Right, either long term, your short term account. Set a number, right? If you have a thousand dollars, right? Let's say you have your stimulus check. Let's say you, you need, you know, half of that for this or whatever. You have a, let's say you have a thousand dollars, for example, right? Don't don't just throw a thousand dollars if you're starting a brand new account. Put a hundred dollars in, put two hundred dollars in at a time, and then add two hundred dollars every month until you hit that thousand dollars that you now have all in the market. So you can kind of, you know, establish some of the learning curve, right? <clears throat> or go through some of that learning curve. So <clears throat> PLTR is one of those where it's like. The longer it sits down here under 25, really under 28, under, under 30 bucks, I'm just like, okay, just snagging some more shares. And it's a longer term kind of speculative trade, but I like it. Um, ARK likes it. So ARK's been buying it, right? Let's take a peek at how ARK Invest has been doing with PLTR. Because I haven't taken a peek at this one in a second. Oh, Palantir, do we have higher weights? No, they're actually kind of honestly... Their weight hasn't really moved. It was, you know, around, it's been around the same on, on Arc K and Arc W, yeah, just over one percent, just under two percent on Arc W. Not a huge high conviction uh, play, at least for them. But you know, they, they at least have been buying some. So interesting to see. April thirty, April calls thirty bucks. That it's it's. I hear you. The problem with PLTR, and it's the same thing that I thought with Rocket Mortgage is that the reason why, and I, I, I get it, because those can pay, right? If PLTR makes a run, they get some news, they make a run this week, there's some big ARK Invest news, or who knows, some analyst comes out with like a $100 price target, who knows, something crazy, then this thing can run, and it can run very, very hard. I think it's also a fairly high short stock. We can take a peek at that too. Oh, VISL, don't even, this is one that I also have been throwing in the IRA too in the long term. I like VISL a lot. Um, we can talk about that too in a second. Let's see. No, they only have 4% shorts. So there's not that many shorts in PLTR. But let me just go to the bottom and see. Yeah, okay. So I'm kind of chilling on, on my PLTR. But the reason why is Rocket Mortgage is the same thing, right? Look at this kind of Rocket Mortgage consolidation range that we saw for months. And you don't know when you're going to break out of that range. And it ended up being a Wall Street bet kind of target, you know, that popped Rocket Mortgage out of that range of like, down from 18 to like 25 for months, you know, and PLTR, could, it's in that range. Could it just sit there? Yeah. And, and could it just be getting, you know, potentially manipulated or whatever you want to call it? I don't know, to the down, to, to hold it down so people can buy in. 
the big money can buy in, maybe. I don't know. But I think, you know, the problem with options on stuff like this is that this is a stock that I kind of see longer term potential in. And so I don't want to kind of limit or I don't want to set myself, you know, up on a time frame. Um, I, I'm, I'd rather go heavier on shares because at least I know worst case scenario, right, <clears throat> this stock comes down. <clears throat> My shares are not going to be worthless unless some drastic thing happens. But at the end of the day, I'd be able to sell before, you know, it goes to zero, right? Um, if something like that happened. So that's why I like to play shares and that's why I don't like options so much on some of these longer term plays. If you're going to do it, I would buy far out options like leaps, um, you know, but it, it's a risk. I mean, I like I like PLTR. I just don't know if I like it by next month, you know? So it's kind of close. It's, it's, it's kind of a, a tough call there. Um, penny stock to start. I made it check out yesterday's video. I have a couple ideas in yesterday's video of penny stocks I'm watching. Um, but one of those as a potential NFT play is DSS. The the way that I envision, the way that I'm going to envision waking up tomorrow morning, right, is going to be I'm going to wake up to a nice press release and see DSS at 10 plus dollars when I wake up because DSS is the perfect in the perfect sector and they have prior press releases, which I think I talked about in yesterday's video too. Um, to literally come out and and put out a, a fluff press release, it doesn't have to it doesn't have to have any legitimacy or backing to it, right? Of, of it could literally just be like we're looking to get into the NFT space or so, like, something like that. Who knows? Like they just put NFT in the headline, the thing will go crazy. Um, as long as the market is isn't like two percent red tomorrow, right? As long as spy is not two percent red, which we'll, we'll dive into futures in a second. But I like DSS as that play. So. I want to see DSS over five bucks. Um, it was a stock that I played back in here. I think they had an offering and I bought just after the offering and I wrote it up to like a dollar gain. I think I had it from like 350 to 450. Um, I don't have the luxury of a three average because I got back into it this week. So I have a low four average, which is not great, but I'll take it. And uh, I'm looking for this one to go five plus. So that's at least my, um, I guess, penny stock, if you want to call it for this week. We'll see. I really want to get news on it, but if it hits, you know, five fifty six bucks without news, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, that's I take profits. That's what I do. I'm not going to let that one slide away from me and lose money on it. Um, so I guess that's my number one, my number one watch for tomorrow. But again, it may not do anything. It's a, it's a swing. So it literally, other thing too to note with a lot of how the the craziness of the recent year market has been is that prior to this, prior to the past like year, I would, when I swing trade, I anticipated being down on my swings until we got news. So like DSS, like I'm willing to trade this one. I'm willing to go red on the trade, right? Because I'm currently up on it because I have a low four average. I'm willing to go red on this trade, but I'm holding it right for the, re for the reason of news. Uh, another one too, HJLI, is a similar one where I'm playing this one or I'm not in it right now. I want to get in this week. I want to be in this one for the news. Like I'm waiting for news to send this stock up, you know, on one of these spikes. That's how I would use to trade these, these penny stocks. And it's a patience game because, you know, as much as you can do a so much due diligence, say, okay, quarter one, they're supposed to release this information or this date is due, right? Number one, you don't know if it is any good or bad. So that could, you know, be, be telling. Um, but, you don't know the date exactly. So it's a patience play. Many times it comes out just after, you know, you're ready to say, okay, I'm moving on. And then it spikes because they got, they got news the next day. Um, so that, I'm, that's how I trade these things. I used to always be red on my trades or most of the time be red on the trade until they got news and the stock spikes up like 50%, take profits. And sometimes you get lucky where you have a, a crazy 300% runner and you're like, wow, I just killed it. But, you know, I, I take profits pretty quick too. So I'm making sure I scale out. A good entry on NMDM would probably be a bounce off 10. So as long as it holds 10, I would play it around 10 bucks as an entry point in the low 10s, as low as you can. As long as, you know, if we, if we wake up tomorrow and everything's down, yeah, it's probably going to fall below 10. But, you know, let's take a peek at how futures are looking right now while we speak. So they're kind of the same spot, actually a little bit more red than we had just before. So S&P... Dow are going to be are looking like they're down close to a quarter percent. Techs, Nasdaq looks like it's about even, just slightly green. Um, VIX is up almost a percent, so nothing too crazy. This could, this is good. this is like this stuff can move super fast in a very very short period of time. So we'll see. 
One thing I do got to check real quick is some of these scores. Rutgers is, is actually taking a, a little lead over Houston right now, which is interesting to see. So that's cool. Um, and then we got Oral Roberts in Florida. They're, they're close to half. That's a five-point game. So uh, we'll be uh, checking in on those guys after this for sure. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, yes, MVAS. There's the potential buyout potential, but I actually think the chart's not bad. So I kind of like this guy. Um, over Holding 15 is decent, but here's the, the move. If it can break out back up over like this 1850, 1875, I kind of like MBIS. It's setting up in my eyes, right? Because we had a pullback, which, you know, healthy pullbacks, you get them, it's, it's fine. You get a healthy pullback. Okay, you're, you come back down to about like 10 bucks. Cool, right? That was the dip of the day, right? For somebody that day who bought it at like sub 11 bucks intraday it popped back up over 12 yeah you made a nice 20 percent whatever it was um but where it's at right now i kind of still see range so we'd like to see it holding 15 but if we can break out over like this 1875 i think we get a shot back up towards those highs which gives you a decent like 30 percent trade from where it's at now to back up towards the highs so i kind of like it. it's on my list I, I threw it down on the list as an idea so not a bad idea um, one more that's on my list as well as QS, QuantumScape, uh, because it's kind of in this range. Now, here's your consolidation range. I mean, it's not like a long, it's not like a short-term trade. Um, it, it, it certainly could be if it, if it moves, but the uh, price target for me would be up here. First, this gap fill up to like 85, 84 bucks. So, okay. So from where you're at right now, if you're playing it like, okay, I'm going to hold a 50, like I'm going to say 50 bucks is my my uh, area I'm going to hold, right? I don't want to see it go below 50 bucks. So if you buy it here, you're risking a couple dollars to the downside, but your target is going to be like 84, this gap fill. Okay, that's 20, or that's 40%. A 40% run from where it's at right now to this gap fill. Now, could it go for more? Yeah. Um, but many times these gaps get filled on the chart. So that's what I'd be looking at as my first target. And this is probably something that I would say, for me, what I would do is I would buy some of this in my longer term swing account or even my IRA. And I would set a good till canceled sell at like 83 bucks. And then if it hits, I don't, I'm not going to watch it. If it hits, it hits. And that's it. You know, and, and if I'm, I watch, okay, it's it's below 50 bucks. I give it a couple days. Uh, okay. Maybe I put an alert under 50 to come back and, re, and reassess, dive a little bit deeper. Has there been news? This, that, and the other thing. But this is a, another decent technical setup. I think it's, you know, massive run pulled back and it's showing some solid support here in the, you know, 40, mid forties area, mid forties to mid fifties. And I can see a, a nice little push up. So, um, EH is one that I've been seeing some requests for. Uh, this is a drone play, right? Yes. I think I, I looked into this one. This is a drone play. I'll pull up the site really quick. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, oh, I, I think it's a decent, but I like drones. I mean, we'll, we'll jump into VISL in a second here too. I like the, I like it. So, okay. We came down here, big push up. There was a short, there was also a short report out, I believe on them too, um, which I've read, I didn't do as much due diligence as I wanted to, but I, I dove into a little bit and I saw, you know, some claims, both sides. I saw some claims, um, you know, kind of backing it up and saying, hey, this is, this report's kind of BS. So, okay. Uh, before I would buy it, I would do more due diligence personally, but I, I briefly looked at it. Um, down here, okay, fell to 28, recently fell down around like 46, 45. It's not a terrible, uh, not a terrible idea. Um, would need to get this thing back over 60 bucks. 50 SMA is at 60 bucks. Would like to see that get back over there. But speaking of drones, let's dive into VISL. Um, the reason why um, is because VISL, I have... There, I have it in my IRA, but I also, which just what that tells me, what that tells you is that I, I like it longer term, right? If it's in the IRA or if it's in the long-term account, I had some in my short-term account, but I sold it when I, last week or whatever, two weeks ago when I, you know, went on a break, but um, I want to get back into VISL. So VISL can come back down to like 350 or below 350. I would be buying this thing um, pretty nice. I, I would say that's, it's fairly, I have a fairly high confidence in this one, but it's also not like a, Oh, tomorrow it's going up. They might get news. It might pop 10, 20%, but it's, that's not the, the, the trade that I'm looking, I'm looking for like a hundred percent plus move on this guy. 
So from the threes, I'm looking, I'm realistically targeting up towards like 10 bucks longer term on VISL because I believe in this one, but uh, 33% short. So a high percentage of the float is short. Low float stock, 16 million shares available, which was fairly low float, which means this thing could move pretty quick um, when we get, you know, if you get some attention or enough volume, right? Um, we had a spike. This thing got up towards over five bucks recently. It's pulled back and it's kind of recovering, putting in higher lows ever since the, the sell off on tech and everything. Um, you know, it fell back down to this this um, 200 SMA, which is decent um, support, 250 ish, and then it recovered beautifully. Market cap is what I'm looking at, okay? They recently, I believe, got a $4 million contract, um, which we can see they were awarded a $4 million U.S. Department of Defense order for handheld intelligence surveillance. Um, their market cap is $166 million. I think that that is low. Uh, personally, believe I with the markets that they have, and, and they recently had an updated investor presentation too, um, You know, not to read too much into that stuff, but they... I think going forward that they're going to get some more contracts. That this is this is just the start, number one. Um, and they were at the Super Bowl too. They have the, the, this, their technology is, is their stuff's pretty cool, if if you if you ask me. Um, and with the military aspect as well, at, you know, I think that's an, that's another kind of avenue that they have as well. So I like this one. Honestly, it's kind of like almost. You know, you can think of it as I think comms is a similar play where you're talking drones, you're talking even 5G, you're talking satellites. You kind of have a similar idea here with VISL. I I personally like it. I think that it will not take very long for a couple more contracts. And you're like, you're talking about how much cash they have on hand. You're talking about how much um, that they're going to be doing in the, in the recent, in near future, that this number will start to look extremely low to many investors. And they're going to start saying, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So, okay, you take that, you know, where the stock price is now, and you think about doubling that, and you still don't have a massive market cap in my eyes. So I think this is a stock that's still, even though it's up a lot over the past couple of months, it's still, I think, in terms of the future value, I think it's still undervalued. Just my take. Um, so I have it. And it's, again, it's, you know, you're playing a stock under five bucks, right? Anything can happen. So, you know, I'm not going to be going, I'm not taking my entire account and going all into VISL. No, but I'm taking a, you know, what I'm willing to play. And usually 10% is the max and anything. So 10% of my account, I'm fine with risking or, you know, playing on that. Um, AAPL. Um, each. Apple, I think is interesting because Apple is a stock that if you don't have Apple in a long-term account, it's like a, almost like a cash park to a degree. They pay like a 1% dividend or something like that. But also, I mean, I don't see Apple going away. I don't see it. I don't see this. This it Could it go on a downtrend for quite some time? Yeah. But if you have long-term, you know, a long-term thesis on it, not a stock you want to be selling right now for sure. Let's see if we can draw in some, um, some trend lines. Yeah, kind of, you know. It's at this trend line support. I would like to see it holding up in the 120-ish area. Don't really want to see it going below like 115. I mean, could it go below? Sure, but it's a stock that on a recent dip like this, this is, this is the time that I'd be buying Apple, right? In a long-term account, just cashing in on that, no worries, is my take. GNOG, is gonna, I'm going to be interested to see how GNOG does in the coming weeks with um, what's going on with the whole sector, right? With the whole sports betting sector right now. I think it's going to be interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see if we get anything with... Um, the betting stuff going on with the whole March Madness stuff and all that. Is there some legitimacy to that? To the, the thesis of, of buying like Penn, buying DraftKings? Could this be the catalyst? Yeah, I mean, maybe. Uh, especially for Penn. I think Penn is kind of crazy too because you see like the Barstool guys. Like if you guys watch like Dave Portnoy and Barstool and stuff, the videos, I mean, whether you like the guy or not, the videos are hilarious because at least I'm someone at least I can relate to them too because back in college, right? I had a, a year, sophomore year, I really got into sports betting, which was terrible. I lost so much. I mean, I actually didn't lose much money, but I had won so much money and then I lost it all, right? Like so fast, um, betting on stupid stuff. But it's so funny just watching their reactions to like seeing like the game, you know, going over, like the spread being covered. Like it's just so funny. Um, I don't know if that's going to have any influence on on the stock price and the hype around this stuff going forward. A lot of volume though. I will tell you, look at this volume candle on Friday crazy volume on Penn. So in a down market, Penn was up for just about 5% on Friday. So I, I like that. I, I bought it. I bought some and 
Uh, it's really a trade, you know, for me into the next couple would follow. If these stocks get, get some attention, I think that would follow. Um, uh, let's see. Sorry if I'm missing stuff. I'm just going down quickly to see stuff. Tesla's oversold. We can pull up the Tesla chart too. I was actually, I think I didn't, I wish I looked into some more. Yeah, I mean, obviously, right? Look at the massive run this thing has had from you know from last March. Yeah, um, but <laughs> that said, I think with the Ark Invest price targets and the kind of the hype around Tesla and how it's like a cult following in a sense, I really want to see what happens. Like, if Tesla gets back over seven hundred and back up to like seven twenty five come um, Monday, come tomorrow, that'll be kind of interesting to see. And I think it could take the whole EV space with it. If it, if well, I think Tesla would have to go to like seven fifty plus potentially to take the EV space with it. So it could do its own thing. Um, it might get a little small sympathy play from some other EVs. It might all be up a little bit, but um, if Tesla goes crazy and goes like 800 in the next like week, then EVs are, are high on my watch. 400 weekly puts for Tesla. The other thing too is, could it be a sell the news? Maybe. Could it be a sell the news and Tesla goes crashing down short term? Maybe, and then I would, I would buy more personally. Um. Clove on a screen without track buying. Yeah, Clove is probably, I mean, the reality of Clove, there's a lot of big names in Clove in terms of institutional money. Um, I think even like Chelsea Clinton is in Clove too. I saw some stuff like Chelsea Clinton bought or has like a, like a, a crap ton of Clove. Um, I don't know what that has anything, if it really means anything, but it's also necessarily not like a short-term stock. I think it probably bottomed out. I think a slow grind is probably what you're looking at for Clove um, with the overall market to a degree in the near term. Um GNUS is a stock that's been on a lot of people's. This has been kind of grinding on up. I think it's cool. GNUS over 250, and again, it gets the party started. And then I would like to see this thing getting back up towards three. It seems like the volume has been, in the past like month and a half, relatively has been decent, you know, all considered. Yeah, it's had its spikes, ups and downs, but the volume has been decent over the past month and a half. So I kind of like, you know, I kind of like that. Um, and it looks decent. Putting in higher lows, would like to see it holding up over two bucks now. That's over two, hold above two. That's kind of my line right there for um, for GNUS. Um, let's see, let's see. Sorry if I'm missing stuff. I can't I can't catch everything. Um, DNN. This is not a bad setup as well um, because we kind of have some solid support down around like a dollar-ish and it's pulled back. We'd like to see this thing getting up over 135 and then it has a shot towards 150 plus. So that's not a terrible spot. Support down around $1, I would say. Wouldn't really want to see it going below one or the 50 SMA, which is this blue line right here. Um, I even had a, a prior line right here. So it has support down around like 84 cents as well if it does drop all the way down, but I don't think it would, at least short term. Um, Okay, let's see, Qualcomm, we'll talk about Qualcomm. How is Qualcomm doing? Uh, it's got, it's it's at the 200 estimate. I don't, I don't wanna get all indicator on people because I don't, I mean, at the end of the day, who cares, right? Indicator is an indicator, it's just a tool that could help guide you on a trade or an idea. Doesn't mean that it's gonna be like the end all be all, no. Um, but but it did bounce off the 200 SMA, which is sitting right around this 125. So we'd like to see 125 holding up for some, some short-term support. But I think your problem here is gonna be, not gonna show you a problem, it's gonna be just tech overall, right? If tech comes back, cool, this is gonna recover beautifully. But if not, then I think, we saw some volume, well, okay. Another thing too, I, for, I, I forgot to even think, we had quad witching on Friday on the 19th. So volume generally is going to be higher on that day too. So I, I, as much as I want to say, oh, wow, we had a crazy, you know, we had a high volume day. That's good. Yes and no. Um, that's also kind of why we had the volume. Okay. So this thing got, has to get over 135 again for some momentum back to the upside. My, 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 tar my first target to watch would probably be up around 50 SMA, 145, and then up towards 150, like two-ish up on these highs to watch for Qualcomm. It gets back over that, you know, you're right back up to where it was. You're back on that up, back on that uptrend, um, you know. So if you like the stock and you wanted to get in, you know, this this is your opportunity, I think. 
relatively right to everything. Now, could everything come crashing down? Yeah, I mean, could this could the S and P five hundred? Um, if people are are talking about like, okay, a 10, 20% drop would get, you know, stocks back towards like, you know, what they should be valued on the S and P. So yeah. So, um, you know, could that bring the S and P, let's take a peek at what that would actually be. What's like a 10% drop on the S and P that brings you yet. That's a, that's a lot. Actually, that brings us down like to like 350, 20% drop brings you down to like 320. No more brings you down to like 310. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know about that. I, I mean, maybe we could see a, a longer-term sustained kind of consolidation or a potential downtrend in the overall market that brings a lot of stocks down. But I don't know about. I don't. I don't think we're going to see a crash. There's. There's no reason, at least, unless we get some news or unless something crazy happens or we just go into a, a, an absolute state of panic. I legitimately don't see a a, a, a drop of more than five to ten percent. Um, in you know the next like in, in in a relatively short period of time, like we're not going to see what happened back in March of last year, unless we had something to the degree right. This is a thirty percent drop. That's insane. Unless we have a black swan like another global pandemic, maybe not uh, maybe not a pandemic, but maybe like something else. Who knows what it could be, right? Anything could happen, right? So unless we get something like that, you know, then yeah, you can get your crazy drop. I just don't see a, a, a sh- you know sh- in terms of short term drops. And the other thing you have to note too is that when the when the market drops like that, right? Even in even if you go back to the March, right? Even even on this time, you had you know a couple of days big down, down, down. Then you had a couple of days popping back up. So there are times where if you don't like the fundamentals, you have the ability to still get out on a green day. It's not like every single day is down, right? Overall, the trend was down, but there was multiple green days inside of this big drop that you had the opportunity to get out. Um, got to go. Okay. No, no problem. I mean, hopefully we're going to wrap things up here soon. So, um, this, I'm hoping for a nice, a nice, you know, week. I think we could see some weakness in terms of the overall market down on Monday. I would say down to like 385 ish would be a bounce zone. I would say, um, but that's at least my, my target. At least if we do see some more weakness, 385 on spy, we'd like to see that hold. If not, yeah, could have come down more. Sure. But we'll see. Uh, have an Apple option, 127 call, right? 120, the contract cost, um, 320. So this this expires this Friday. Uh, below the strike price, what happen if it's not going to exercise? Um, I have a 127 call, Apple 120. I don't know, if you have two contracts or let's see. If you have a 127 call on Apple, for example, right? Um, they will expire worthless if Apple is not over 127. So that 127 is going to expire one, worthless. The 120, if, 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 you have, if you have two contracts, the 120 is going to be, you're right around the money right now. So you need that Apple goes over 120, you're going to have value there. But if it goes, if Apple is below 120 come Friday, both of those contracts are going to have no value come the end of the day on Friday. Um, yeah. Um, SOS, I, I personally don't, I mean, I personally don't really like SOS in terms of their response. Doesn't mean I won't trade it again. SOS, you know, is a decent go-to play for Bitcoin. If Bitcoin starts running up, SOS is lagging. I'll take some for a day trade, you know, for sure. Um, needs to get over nine bucks. That's kind of the key over nine bucks. And then back over 10 is, is going to be key for SOS. I would say, um, SNDL, I'm not. Um, I said, you know, I mean, I like this, this play too, honestly, if, uh, cannabis stays hot, um, or kind of the next leg of cannabis pushes up, right? We'll see. Um, I'm really watching Tilray though on that one. So however Tilray does, your SNDL is probably going to follow along. So it's the whole sector, which to be honest with you, I probably would just, you're, you're probably better off if you're bullish on cannabis, you're probably better off just buying like an ETF, um, a, a cannabis, ETF or something like that, and just stashing it away in a long-term account and just forgetting about it if you believe in the cannabis space longer term. Yeah, could you miss out on some crazier gains if SNDL makes a run back up to like three bucks? Yeah, you, you, you can miss out on 100% gain, but you're probably going to capture, you know, a decent chunk of gains and you're not going to have to worry about it um, as much, you know, and you don't have to worry about individual stocks. SNDL is a pretty big shelf offering on file as well. So, eh, 
I'm, I mean, SNDL is a stock that I'm in for a short, if I get in, I'll be in for a short-term trade. BNGO has come back quite a bit. Um, it's sitting here at nine bucks. Would like to see this. It's trying to consolidate here. So it's got to get back over 10. I don't really like BNGO personally until it gets back over 10. And the 50 SMA is up around 10 too. So I would like, I, you know, could you take a shot at it if you like it longer term here? Yeah, people are going to say, I love BNGO long term, you know. Again, this thing was a 50 cent stock, you know, three, four months ago. So you're talking about a $9 stock now. The move is nuts. I mean, if we just take a peek, I, I like to always look at this too. And I think people should look at this too. Like, you know, not that this matters in this day and age, but the market cap on BNGO is 1.56 billion, right? I, I don't, I haven't dip, I've been able to dive deep enough into this one, but the sale, at least what we're seeing on Finvis, sales are 7.3 million. So you're factoring in massive future potential, right? Which is, is big, right? Genomics is going to be huge, as ARK Invest says, and a lot of people say genomics is going to be big going forward. But you're factoring in a lot of, you know, potential. So pullbacks here are going to be pretty decent. And so, I, I mean, I don't like it unless I'm taking it for more of a day trade, personally. I did not get on S, uh, SPCB. I did not. Let's take a peek at it, though. Um, yeah, that thing went crazy. It, it, it pulled back a lot, though. You have a gap down to about 2, 150. So, I mean, I don't like playing these things after they had just previously run. Um, but, you know, that is that. Um, BNGO could certainly be huge. I mean, I'm not saying it can't, but, right, it, you know, well, I mean, there's a decent amount of risk, at least up here in my eyes. So, I mean, I'm not wanting to take that unless it's a, it's a day trade. I'm, I'm gonna, I would be playing it in a short-term account or put a small amount in a speculative longer-term growth account and not look at it. Like, literally just forget about it. Maybe, you know, every, you check it every week or two to make sure that, you know, fundamentally the company is not, you know, going down or it's not, you know, going down the toilet, right? Obviously, you want to make sure that fundamentally it's, there's still some backing there, but um, you're probably better off, to be honest. A lot of times you're better off. If you have a long-term kind of thesis on a stock, you're literally just better off and not selling it, not even looking at it half the time because then you're, you know, you're going to mess with your emotions and you don't need to do that. And it's literally like that's 90% of the game for, for some people. It's the emotional aspect of it, you know? Oh, HSTO is on my list too. Um, I don't, I'm not in it, but the chart does look decent. 50 SMA support down around 125, 130-ish. Um, I like it. I like this as an oversold play. It's on my oversold list. I like this one. Um, I'm going to look into it this week. If I miss it, if it, if it runs tomorrow, we know it runs tomorrow, I miss it. But it's definitely on my list. So I think a $2 target is where I'd be looking at first, up towards this 200 SMA, up around 2 um, CLSK AMC is interesting with the opening of theaters, so that's gonna be kind of interesting. Um, over over like fourteen fifteen AMC could be interesting. CLSK, um, hmm. it's 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 run up a lot. It's super volatile, but you're at the bottom, roughly at the bottom of the range, and you had some decent volume as of late. So down around twenty bucks is not a terrible spot if you're looking in the low twenties for an entry point. Um, heavy in HSTO. Yeah, well, that's that's. If it's if I think two bucks is a good target for HSTO first at least. TRCH is at the fifty SMA. It's at support. We're like it's got to hold like two bucks, um, I would say. So we'll see. Um, NXCD could be massive. Bitcoin continues. Yeah, it, it, NXCD is is uh, I've day traded that one a couple of times with Bitcoin. Um, it's been a prior Bitcoin runner. Yeah, it's setting up too. It's at the fifty SMA. These are like. These types of charts look nice when you kind of have a consolidation and like you're kind of coming to a point where you have less kind of range, less volatility, and then you get to a point, usually you get a, either a breakout to the upside or a downside, and it's usually pretty explosive. Um, so, you know, it's a decent chart setup. Um, yes, I have uh, I have GMBL, but I, I'm with you on that. I, I took it as more of a speculative play over the next few weeks, but uh, I like it. I mean, I took some, so we'll see. I'm, I'm with you on it. I mean, we'll see if it can kind of hold up in this area and make a run to 20 plus. 20 bucks is my first target, so not a huge range, but I'm, I mean, I'm in it. I'll take a good chunk at the 20 bucks, and then if it runs on up further, then, you know, that's that. Um, uh, the broker that I use is, is Webull. There's a link in the pinned comment if you want to check it out. Get a, There's a sign-up bonus. This is, this is what I use. You can trade from 4 a.m. Eastern to 8 p.m. Eastern, so I, I like it. Um, customer service isn't great if you have issues. Um, which sucks, but I haven't really had to worry about it too much, to be honest. So I can't really say. 
I've heard stories of people having some tough times with that. Um, Zom is interesting. Um, we're getting close to the launch. So this is interesting. I would, it's, I would like to see it holding two bucks um, on Zom. The launch is on the 30th, right? So be careful of the 30th because you could see a sell the news or the company could come out with a press release and the thing could pop or it could just run up on the launch day. Who knows? There's been a lot of hype. I've seen a lot of people making videos on the stock. So that's there's a lot of potential hype and volume there. But we can also see just a complete flush out if the the company goes quiet at the launch and there's no updates. So just be careful of that. Um, screener, um, you, well, I have a couple of things. I don't really, to be honest, I have access to a trade ideas, which I think there's a link down below too in the description to see um, for the trade ideas scanner. But that costs, for most people, it's not worth it. It costs too much money and it's probably more for day traders. I literally will just, for my swings, I'll just be combing through the Finviz screeners and I'll just, I don't have any set no, you know, things. I have some videos on how to find stocks to trade. There's a, even a playlist that I go over some stuff, but I don't have anything set. So if I'm looking for stocks, like, you know, usually I'm looking for stocks under like 10 bucks. So I'll set that. Usually I'm looking for stocks under a hundred million float. So I'm looking for stocks that can move pretty quick. And then sometimes I'll look at, you know, um, sectors. I'll look at relative volume, usually over one, over 1 1.5, over two, see your higher volume stocks. And then I'll look for stocks that have trend line support, you know, or something like that. Um, and I'll play it, you know, pretty much that's like the name of the game. I'm just going to be combing through. I'm not looking for anything specific for the most part. Um, and I just kind of comb through and I hover over some ticker symbols. And if a chart has a decent eye to me, for example, ABIO, still, I like ABIO. This chart down around four bucks, ABIO is still on my list. Is it on my list? Actually, I don't think it is. Um, I was in it recently, but I had to sell it. Um, because I was taking a break or I, was, I had to transition my account. But yeah, I mean, this is what I'll do. I'm just combing through. It takes some time. It takes more time. But I mean, sometimes I don't really care. I'm just going to do it because why not? <laughs> so let's see. Um, uh, let's see. AAB. AABB. I don't know enough about this one. It had a decent balance with 50 SMA though, down around um, 112 or so. So it's a decent, that could have been a decent spot. And it's, it's running, I mean, I don't play anything that's up this high. That makes this move. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to buy this thing down towards the bottom. That's just my take. Um, let's see, 1,000 shares. Um, yeah, Ben, I mean, there's there's absolutely no need for that type of stuff. Uh, I, don't, I don't give, I mean, the thing is, guys, I don't give you that stuff. We, we, we go over plays, we bounce ideas off. It's the name of the game. The guys who are telling you to buy this stock now, hurry and, and jump in fast, that's the type of stuff I stay away from. So we don't need any of that stuff here, man. We really don't. Absolutely contributes nothing to the conversation. And that's just not anyone that we all, you know, ideally want to be around here. So appreciate that, but please, you know, go do what you want to do. Um, CTRM is a stock too. I played it in the past. I mean, mm, I wasn't, I wasn't a huge fan. I haven't paid attention to the recent news. Let's see. Um, let's pull up the recent news. They've been acquiring some vessels, but, uh, let's see. Deliveries of, I think some vessels here. We have vessel acquisition. We have, um, yeah, that's, that's what they've been up to at least as of late. That's a lot of the times there's people that are really into the shipper stuff and, to be honest, there's a lot of negativity around that space too. So, I mean, I, I, tr I take these for very short-term trades and I try to buy bottoms. So I don't, I don't really try to buy, you know, I mean, this is up too much for me. Could it have a bigger run in it? Sure. The problem with CTRM is if we take a look at Finviz, I want to say that the market cap's up at 481. We have shares flow of 130 um, million shares, decent, it's 13% short. So it is what it is. Um, let's see. I don't know. I, I'm just not a huge, not a huge fan of it. If it can hold up around this area, 50 SMA at like 80 cents, you know, cool. That would be a decent spot if it holds up around 90 cents, cool. But uh, I'm not a huge fan. I'd like to see it getting back up over like 110. You know, would be the number that I'd be looking at. Um, I feel like I need somewhere to sit next to me while I trade, so I can use it. Oh, the name of the game really, honestly, is like it is just taking the time to just practice. So it, you know, that's why I always recommend when you're starting out, you know, don't don't just, you know, throw all your money that you have into a, a brokerage account and, and, and that's it. Um, 
take, if you have, if you have a thousand bucks, take a hundred bucks, put it into your account for the first month, mess around with your hundred bucks. If you lose, you know, 50%, which would be a pretty bad month. You lost 50, you know, you lost 50 bucks. So that's the, that's it. And, and that's, that's how it really was for me. I mean, I had all, there's so much stuff. There's so many ideas. There's so many of these people nowadays that, you know, are, are like the professional, the professional traders and stock pickers. The name of the game is that no one, I mean, I don't know anything at the end of the day, right? There's so much more that there's to learn, right? But you, you stick with it and you learn from your past mistakes to improve yourself over time. So it's not like, you know, it's not like it's going to be a one-time thing. Okay, you know, if you follow this guy's advice or you follow this exact strategy, it's going to work. You'll, you'll see what generally works for you. And then it's a game of percentages, really. I found that swing trading is where I make my money. I mean, I literally dive through. I generally lose money, you know, all in all on day trades. And I make a lot more money longer term when you zoom out on swings. So why would I, why am I going to day trade? You know, that's just kind of my take. CTRM has a pretty high short interest. Um, yeah, I mean, CTRM, it could be a, a good pop. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the shipper, so I'm probably not going to play him, but um, that's my take. DMYI. Um, let's see. Is this a SPAC? Is this a SPAC or no? I don't know. I don't know much about it, but it's sitting here at like 11 bucks. This has got some support around 11 bucks, so it's not a terrible entry point, technically speaking. So I don't think it's terrible. Um, let's see. Um, our Rolls Royce um, is popping up a little bit, right? People were talking about Rolls Royce. I I've been watching it. If you want, I mean, it's I don't think it's a terrible idea with what they have going on at least right now. Um, to just throw into a longer term account and forget about it. I mean, this is, it's been a while when people have been mentioning it for quite some time. So it's still relatively low from where, you know, technically speaking, 130 or so is the low. So I'd be, I'd be probably grabbing some here down around, you know, if I can get it towards 150, great. And looking for a longer term hold on it. And just, that's it, you know. Um... Yes, info. Yeah, that's the thing. At the end of the day, everyone, you, you get, the, th the thing I think is cool is that um, OTIC, I, it's on my list. I like that one. Um, it's just an oversold play. Um, I'm still, I'm not in it, but I like it. It's on my list. Um, and then comms, I think is nice too. Comms over three bucks, I like. But when it comes down to it too, like this whole, you know, age of social media too, I think is important. People understand that, you know, you ultimately are the one clicking the button. So if you're the one that's clicking the button, you know, it's it's ultimately up to you. You can get the idea from somebody else. It could be some guy, some comment you see. It could be somewhere you know you see on TV, or it could be some you know video you see. But it's you clicking the button, right? I, I don't. I'm not going to tell anyone to buy or, buy or sell a stock. Uh, hopefully, give people good ideas. They can make their decisions based off technicals, based off fundamentals, based off their own plans and, and creating their own plan. I'd rather people have their own plan and lose money um, than just buy blindly and make money. You know, because you can actually learn from your own plan. Okay, here's what I did wrong. Boom. Right? I mean, you can learn from, 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 you know, making money on somebody else's play too. But you know what I mean? You know, you're, you're going to learn more from the losses, at least early on. So, um, well, other thing too, with, with you get intimidated because you can't deposit, deposit much more. That's, that's, that's the way that everyone feels too when they start out. But if, if you, if you, if you start out with whatever amount, give yourself, you know, the power of compounding with the compound effect over 10 years, five years, right? Is crazy, right? So you got to take a step back. And I, I have to take a step back too, because I'm currently halfway through the challenge. I was going from like 15K to, to 100K in one year in my account. And so I'm halfway through in terms of like time frame, like it's been 26 weeks or whatever. Um, and I'm at 50K in the account. So it's like, I got to take a step back. I have to still double my account in the next six months to hit my goal of 100,000. 100, but take a step back. Like this is a pretty crazy past couple of months that I've had. So you know, there's still some big wins. And even if I just compounded at the rate that I just did the past couple of months, and I just stopped, right? The rest of this year, I just stopped trading, and I only traded. You know, once we hit like 2022. You know, I mean, that's still a crazy, you know, compound growth over the long term. If I was consistently able to do that, so there's no need to rush, you know, into this stuff. If you just compound it, you know. Even if you compound at 10% per year, just buy an S&P 500 ETF, compound 10% per year, deposit $5 a month when you're starting out when you're young, 
And as you have a higher income, deposit $100, $200, $1,000 a month, whatever you can afford. Just do the math on that. I mean, you're, the compound effect does its job, you know, insane. Um, let's see. So, oh, IPWR, last one. And we'll wrap things up. IPWR, I am going to probably grab this one for a swing too. It's been coming down. I like it down here. Yeah, could it come down more? Yeah, but over like 16 bucks, this thing breaks out of the downtrend and that's going to be very interesting. So I'm playing IPWR probably for a run towards like 25, 20 and 25. So that would be my take on that one. Um, so with that said, let's take a peek really quick at futures. They're all red. <laughs> Just like that, everything went red. So uh, nothing, not super, super red, but they're all you know a little bit red. So we'll see. We had a red day on Friday. This could change. You know, obviously we wake up tomorrow morning, everything could change completely. So we'll see. Um, hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully you guys get something out of the stream. Like always, make sure to thumbs up button on the way out. Good luck this week. Um, have plenty of videos. We're gonna do a stream on Wednesday morning, um, live market open stream. So stay tuned for that, and we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.